this video, we'll review how to graph absolute value functions. Absolute value functions will be in this form. f of x equals a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. Now this should look very familiar. We've seen something very similar to this. We've seen this form, or if you prefer, f of x equals m quantity x minus h plus k, or we can also say it's f of x equals m quantity x minus x1 plus y1. This is point slope of a line. We've also seen the functions f of x equals a quantity x minus h squared plus k. That's the vertex form of a quadratic function. Both of these look very familiar to the one above. In both cases, the hk is our horizontal and vertical components to our turning point. So if we have this form for the absolute value, the h and the k becomes the turning point, kind of like the vertex of a parabola, or we can also think of it as a starting point for our linear uh, functions. Now the a is the slope or the stretch. Well, in this case, that a is going to be a plus or minus value. The slope on one side is going to be a positive a, on the other side it's going to be the negative. So we'll look at how this works out here in just a moment. Just keep in mind, we find that turning point, the hk value, that's where we're probably going to start the graph, and then on one side we use the positive slope of a, on the other side we use the negative slope of a. Let's see how this works. Here we've got the function number one. f of x equals the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 1. Let's start by finding that critical turning point. It should be x minus h, but it's not. This tells me that it's really x minus a negative 2. So the h value is negative 2, and the k is negative 1. So our turning point is negative 2, negative 1. We'll begin there on the graph. Now for the slope, there's no coefficient in front. I don't see an a value. This tells me a is 1. So on the right side, we'll use a positive slope of 1, and to the left of negative 2, negative 1, we'll use a negative 1 slope. So our slope is at plus or minus 1. All right, so first thing we want to do is scale our graph and label it x and y axes, put the numbers on there, and then we're going to find the point negative 2, negative 1. It's right here. As I said before, because this is the positive absolute value, the right side is going to increase, the left side will decrease. So looking at how this is going to go, we're going to have a slope of 1 on the right side, and then we'll have a slope of negative 1 on the left. And there's our absolute value. Now absolute values can also be thought as piecewise linear functions. We have one equation with a negative slope up to that turning point, and then to the right of it we have a new equation with a positive slope. We can really look at the absolute value function to see what those uh, linear functions would be. So we can write it as piecewise, and it's really just going to be two parts. To the left, it has a negative 1 slope. A key point on the line is negative 2, negative 1, so I can write it like this. f of x equals negative quantity x plus 2 minus 1. And that is on the interval from negative infinity to negative 2. When you write a piecewise function, after you write the actual equation, make sure you write the domain restriction. To the right of this point, the slope is no longer negative. Instead of being negative one slope, it's now a positive one slope. So the piecewise part of this would be the quantity x plus 2 minus 1, but now it's from negative 2 to infinity for my domain restriction. Now in the second function, the only thing that's really changed is the hk values. Here, we have the, uh, the function g of x equals the absolute value of x minus 3 plus 2. This tells me that the turning point, or the critical point that I want to find, is going to be 3, 2. Knowing that the critical point is 3, 2 is going to help me to graph it. Because there's no a value in front, we assume a is 1. To the right of this point 3, 2, it's going to have a slope of positive 1, and to the left of the point 3, 2, it's going to have a slope of negative 1. So again, let's start by scaling and labeling our axes, and locating the point 3, 2. It's right here. To the right of this point, the slope is 1, and to the left of it, it's negative 1. And there's our function, or the graph of our function. As far as the piecewise go, it's going to be g of x equals. For the first part, it's got a negative 1 slope, and it passes through the point negative 3, 2. That would be negative quantity x minus 3, then plus 2. The domain restriction is for negative infinity, less than x, less than 3. Or, where x is between negative infinity and 3. To the right of this point, the slope is no longer negative. If the slope is no longer negative, instead of saying negative quantity x minus 3, we'll just say the quantity x minus 3, and then plus 2. And now it's from the domain 3 to infinity. So let's try a couple harder ones. Here I'm going to change up the a values. So let's take a look at the first one. 
Here we've got f of x equals 3 quantity x minus 1 minus 8. The critical turning point is going to be the point 1 comma negative 8. But because now we have an a value, one side is going to have a negative 3 slope, the other side is going to have a positive 3 slope. So my slope is really kind of plus or minus 3. So let's start by finding that critical turning point, 1, negative 8, after we label, label and scale the axes. 1, negative 8 is going to be down here. To the right of this, we have a positive 3 slope. So it's going to go up 3 and over 1, up 3 and over 1, until we get out of the graph. To the left, it's going to have a negative 3 slope. So left 1 and up 3. Or up 3 and left 1, up 3 and left 1, up 3 and left 1. As far as the piecewise function, we're going to say f of x equals the first piece to the left of the turning point has a negative 3 slope and passes through the point 1, negative 8. So we'll say it's negative 3, quantity, x minus 1, and then minus 8. And this is on the interval from negative infinity to 1, up to that turning point. The other side of it has a positive 3 slope. So instead of saying negative 3 quantity, we'll say it's positive 3 quantity, and then x minus 1, minus 8. And it'll do this from everywhere from our turning point 1, and then towards infinity looking like this. Go ahead and try the next one. The negative slope is going to flip the direction of the graph. It's going to be um, reflected vertically. So find your turning point, and then the right side is going to have the negative slope. Left side will have the positive slope. Go ahead and try it, pause the video, and then resume it when you're ready. I'll give you a moment. Alright, hopefully you've had a chance to do this problem. Our turning point is going to be the point negative 3, 4. The slope to the right is going to be negative 5, but to the left is going to be positive 5. So our slope is plus or minus 5. Let's go ahead and label and scale the axes and find that critical point, negative 3, 4. That's to the left 3 and up 4 from the origin. Again, because I said that this is a negative 5 to start with, we're going to go down 5 when we go to the right over 1, but we'll go um, from the other side with a positive slope. So it's going to look like this. There's my right side. There's my left side. Piecewise function, g of x equals, it starts with a positive 5 slope, so it's 5 quantity, x plus 3, plus 4, from negative infinity to negative 3, and then it's negative 5 quantity, x plus 3, plus 4, from negative 3 to infinity. Alright, hopefully this video has helped you to figure out how to graph absolute value functions and how to write their piecewise functions. Thank you for watching.